Hey folks, welcome to the project bench. Well, as you can see, I've got a couple uh, boxes here. These are actually uh, two power supplies that I scavenged out of an old Dell server. One of them I've already set up to uh, use to uh, run my uh, chargers for my RC stuff because these things pump out a lot of juice. Uh, these pins give you actually 12 volts out. Um, and you can see the sticker that or not, it'll give you 12 volts at 41 amps, this is a 502 watt power supply, so this will power any charger that you may have for uh, anything you need for a 12 volt output, but I've got a second one here, and I haven't done anything to this one, and uh, so what I want to do is I want to be able to hook these in series and get myself 24 volts at 41 amps output, which will turn out be a thousand watt power supply, but there's a problem with uh, running these in series from the factory, and that is uh, you have the case is grounded, it's earth ground for safety purposes, but also the DC post is earth grounded. I'll show you here on my meter. You'll be able to see. Put it to ohms. Actually, I'll put it to continuity. So that's a problem. And the reason that's a problem, if you know anything about uh, how running stuff in series works, it's like series batteries, is you take the, pretend this is a positive and negative on this post, you go from positive to negative. So this becomes your positive, this becomes your negative, and you get 24 out. The problem is, this is also earth grounded, so your end up, this positive is going to this negative. This negative is connected to earth, and these are all connected to your earth ground. So that means you're actually shorting this positive out to earth ground, so you're shorting this power supply out. So you have to isolate this DC post from earth ground. I may do both, but really you only need to isolate the one that you're pulling the, uh, where you're taking the positive off to the negative. You could isolate either or. Uh, it would work just fine. So that's my plan. As well, if you're going to use one of these power supplies, you can see I've got a little diagram here, but you have to figure out which of these pins. They need to be there's control signal pins to turn it on. If you just plug this in, it's not going to turn on. You need to figure it out. I was able to find uh, the pinouts online and that's what my little matrix is here to tell me I had to short these three pins together. You can't see them shorted in here because I actually pulled the case off and shorted them inside. So I'm going to crack this open and see what's involved with uh, getting my DC ground isolated. Usually you have to isolate the ground plane of the circuit boards inside from the case. So we'll see, I'll get this all cracked open and we'll take a look inside and see what we can see. I should have mentioned at the beginning of this video that uh, I take no liability if you try to do this yourself. You need to know what you're doing. There's high voltage in these things and uh, you need to have a basic, uh, you have to have the knowledge of electronics and power and that before you even try to attempt something like this or otherwise you're looking to uh, get yourself shocked. So just be warned. and. I'm not responsible for anything that may happen to you if you try this yourself. Hey, I took all the screws out of the case, and uh, there you can see, oh boy, it's just kind of grimy in there, some dead, ah, dead spider. Nice. You can tell it's been running for a while, but you turn it sideways here and you can kind of see inside what we're looking at. And uh, now we got to figure out how we isolate. Actually, you know, I'm going to go dust this out first before I do anything. So that's disgusting. Hold on a sec. There, I got her all dusted out. It's a little cleaner now. So as I was saying, we need to figure out to isolate the uh, DC ground from the AC ground. Hard for me to kind of show you. Maybe if I prop it up at an angle, you can see better. There. So if we take our uh, meter, 
and we look here. Here's see the easy thing would be to take this off and be done with it, but that's not the it's not the safe way of doing it. So I'd rather uh, rather not do that. So uh, we need to figure out now if we look at uh, for example here's a negative wire which is probably your DC or not I'm full of crap but sorry if we go to all these screws which are all connected through to the case they're all connected to DC ground now if you look at all the screws I think I only see one that actually connects to the ground plane. I think the best thing to do is to pull the boards out. Well, uh, pulling the boards out is going to be a little, well, it might be all right. Just have to pull these screws out and then lift the boards out and we can look at the traces and see which ones, uh, which screws connect to the uh, ground plane. but. You won't be able to see if there's one down in there that I'm pretty certain is going to be the one that connects us to the DC ground. So I'm just going to see if I can get the rest of, or get these boards right out, and then we'll take a really good look at it. Well, Bob's your uncle. I got her all apart. Now what I'm going to do is reconnect some of these wires so the two circuit boards are reattached. To each other and I can see let me see here if you look on the look on these traces or on these holes you can see how there's I don't know if you can see from uh, your uh, angle there got to watch it. this thing was live for a while so this cap will have some juice in it but can you see on the that one screw hole how it's got the metal on it. That means that it's probably connected to the ground plane. And there's also this guy up here as well. It's connected. If you look at the bottom side, you can see a really good view of it right there. And right there. Now on this board, I see right here there's one. And that looks like it. All the other screws are isolated. So let's just take my meter back on continuity and double check to confirm that those indeed are connected to your DC. And let's see, still got continuity. I'm thinking there's a little bus pin here as well. Yes, right there. So it goes to here. There's a little jumper wire some I don't know if it's a it's not really a fusible link but that little guy right there connects the DC to the uh, ground plane as well so I think that probably needs to be chopped out I see one there that needs to be could probably just be chopped out or I well I don't want to chop them out I just want to ice yeah, it's hard to tell. This is only a a double-sided or double-sided board. So if I take, I can see by shining light through. Uh, if I have a flashlight, maybe I can show you. But there's a little jumper pin right there. That'll isolate this pad from the ground plane. There is a jumper pin there that'll isolate this underside from the ground plane. This guy has protection on it, um, so that one I think we have to leave. There's some filtering or there's stuff going on there. So that one I'll have to just put an insulation type material under there. And I think that's all of them. So I'm going to uh, take care of all that and we'll kind of loosely mount it back in the case and see if we are indeed isolated from the metal. So just uh, give me a moment and I'll be back.
Okay, I figured I'd show you what I did before I throw this back together for this to isolate this one pad. I used my heat gun, or sorry, hot glue gun, and I stuck a chunk of this high voltage. It's good for 600 volts. It's kind of a vulcanizing rubber tape. And I just cut a chunk and I glued it on there. Now, uh, hopefully these other two, actually, way to check it, the other two pads should already be isolated because I cut the... Uh, Cut the two little jumper wires. So let's just see. It's my meter. This guy isolated, open circuit. And this other guy, sorry, my big head's in the way, isolated as well. So let's get her back in the case and test it. Okay, the moment of truth. Now I've got one screw left over and that's because that uh, one hole where I put the uh, rubber on I did not put the screw through because uh, then it would just short it out again it's going to be fine with missing one screw and oh, got to turn the meter on let's see if I did it right or if I missed something I haven't done this yet so we'll see if it's a fail or a pass there we go nothing Nothing on the case anywhere. So that's a thumbs up. I can put this all back together and that, and we'll test it to make sure it actually still works. So give me a few moments. I'll slam her back, slam her back together. We'll plug it in and see if I actually have, still have a working power supply. Should be fine, but never can tell. Okay, she's all back together. Now the moment of truth. Let's plug it in and see if she goes up in smoke or if she fires up. The fan's fairly noisy, so you'll hear it right away if she's working. Fan's on. Let's get the meter. Let's see if it's still outputting uh, approximately 12 volts. It should probably be, it'll be over 12 volts probably. There we go. 12 and a half volts, which is fairly standard output. So that's a success. I'm going to unplug it. Actually, I don't even need to. But I will. And we're just going to double check. I'm on ohms range. And it's still isolated. 